happy Tuesday. Um, we are here for Hey Y'all again. Um, it's Tuesday's edition. Today is Monday. So, Hey Y'all, happy Tuesday. Feels kind of weird. But I don't ever really know what day it is anyway. So, what the fuck does it matter? Um, baseball is over. Postseason baseball is over. My life has gotten a lot calmer because cheerleading is also over. Um... So, we're going to be able to get this Tuesday, Thursday thing down because I decided to jump on this in October right when postseason baseball was starting and I don't know why I thought I could keep a schedule during postseason baseball and competition month for cheerleading. I definitely couldn't. But, it doesn't matter because all that's over now and here we are. Um, I have not talked to you guys since the Braves officially won the World Series and it's so damn exciting. Um, dreams really do come true. Braves in six. Trevor is a genius. Um, he's like fucking Nostradamus or something. I don't know. Wish he would have placed that bet. It was actually so funny. Um, I had so many people who like know I really like baseball, but they're not really into baseball, but they watch postseason baseball, I guess, because why not? You know, there's tons of fucking Braves fans around here now since the Braves won. But who had been talking to me like, hey, did you see that dude who placed the bet on Braves beating the Astros in six, blah, 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 blah. I was like, actually, that's my friend. And um, he didn't place a bet. He's a fucking dumbass. He just tweeted it. Could have made some money, but he didn't. Anyways, don't leave money on the table, guys. What's $1,000? I mean, for me, it's a lot of fucking money. But for Trevor, should have placed that bet, baby. Should have placed that bet. Anyway, um, forgive me, guys. It's been a Monday. Um, yeah, so the Braves won. Max was like a fucking monster, which I expected from him. I told y'all that. There was no reason for me to believe that he was not going to come out and be a fucking genius on the mound, and that's exactly what he was. Um, and the Braves won. Jorge Soler was the MVP. Of the World Series, which is really cool for a dude who fucking sucked the first half before getting traded. So, that's really cool. And, yeah. Braves and Six. Go Braves. It was amazing. I love this team so fucking much. And it's really sad that they're not ever going to be the same. Because a lot of these guys aren't coming back. But that's for us to talk about later, not now. Um, the parade looked awesome. I have still never been to a championship parade. I don't know who decided to make the parade on a Friday at fucking 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock or whatever the hell it was. Because, like, a bitch got to work. And I know y'all say take off, but, like, it don't really work like that. For real. For a lot of us. So, Atlanta, could we please schedule the next championship parade for a Saturday? Because your girl would really appreciate that. Um. Anyway, so... That's that. The Braves won. I'm the happiest girl in the whole wide world. And now, other sports exist. But not really, because we're still going to talk about Major League Baseball for the first part of this, because it's very important. Um, Sorry, my mom's calling me. Obviously. So, baseball. Qualifying offers came out yesterday. Um, And I noticed that a lot of people don't really know what a qualifying offer is, what purpose it serves, where the number comes from, how long it's been around, why do we do it, all that fun stuff. And that's fine. Because if you don't follow baseball super, super closely, why would you know what a qualifying offer is? Why would you know all that bullshit? Who knows? Um, so, I took all the shit that's in my head and wrote it down on paper so that I won't just sit here and ramble for 25 minutes because otherwise that's what I'll do. So, if you see me glancing down, that's what I'm looking at. I have notes. I made notes. I'm fucking... Prepared, okay? Enjoy this because it'll probably be a long time till it happens again. So, qualifying offers were introduced for the first time in 2012. Um, then, when that CBA got restructured or redone, whatever, in 2017, they changed a little bit, but whatever, that doesn't really matter. The rules from the 2017 CBA qualifying offer is what we use now, and who knows, maybe they'll change a little bit when we redo the CBA here in the next few months. Maybe they won't. I don't fucking know. But we're just going to talk about what it is right now. Um, the clubs who are wanting to receive 
a compensation draft pick for losing a free agent to another team, offer that free agent or upcoming free agent, whatever, a qualifying offer. The qualifying offer is the salary is based on a mean of the top 125 players, like paid players in MLB. So that's how they come up with the salary. The player has to have spent the entire season with that club. So trade guys aren't an option. They have to be there for the entire season. Or excuse me, trade deadline. I guess they could have been trade, but trade deadline guys aren't an option. And they have to have never received a qualifying offer before in their career. You can only get one. So that's how you kind of, that's the ground rules for figuring out who can get it. Now, once the players receive that qualifying offer, they have 10 days to decide if they want to accept it or reject it. During that 10 days, they can talk to other teams and be in negotiations and start trying to figure out what their market is or could be. Um, because, like last year, Kevin Gossman got a qualifying offer, and it was like 18.8 or $9 million last year. And Kevin Gossman probably didn't really do a lot of shopping around because there was probably not a lot of people who were going to pay Kevin Gossman $18 million. However, then the Giants turned him into a fucking superstar. And this year he'll probably make way more than that. So that's neither here nor there, I don't guess. All for not. Whatever. Doesn't fucking matter. But like, okay, here's an actual good example. Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman is a free agent. The Braves gave him a qualifying offer so that if he does sign with another team, we can get a draft pick as compensation for losing him. Um, when he rejects that offer, which he will because, duh, he will have talked to other teams, most likely. I mean, that kind of sucks to think about as a Braves fan, I guess, but, like, he probably is trying to figure out, or he, his agent is trying to figure out what his market is, exactly what he's going to make. It's going to be more than $18 million a year, so we're trying to figure out what it is. So that's what goes on during those 10 days. Now, if a team signs a player who rejected a qualifying offer, so when Freddie rejects his, if he is then signed by the Angels, the Angels are going to give up one of their draft picks to the Braves. That just kind of helps offset the pain of losing a fucking superstar. That's just how it is. Now, as far as those draft picks goes, it can get really, really hairy. So I'm going to try and make it as short, sweet, simple as possible here. Now, the highest first round draft pick is not eligible. But your other first round draft picks are eligible. So there are three tiers of draft pick forfeiture. They're based on financial status of the signing team. So in our example that we're working with with Freddie Freeman, it would be the Angels. Um, each pick in the first 10 rounds is assigned a value. The value of each of the team's selections equals what it can spend on signing bonuses for the players in those rounds without incurring a penalty. Um, when a team forfeits a draft pick for signing a free agent who got a qualifying offer, they also forfeit that bonus pool money that is associated with that pick. That kind of sounds really confusing, but I swear it's not. So if, if you give up a, if you sign a free agent who had a qualifying offer, you're going to give up a draft pick. All kinds of shit affects which draft pick it is. Just remember, it's not going to be your highest first round pick. After that, there's all different things. Um, like I said, it gets real hairy. It's based on things like revenue sharing and if you've been over the luxury tax and the contract size for the player that's being signed, yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go on into all that bullshit, but um, you can go to MLB.com. I'll put it in the description box or something if I remember to do that. And it has like a really cool little page where they explain what a qualifying offer is, which is probably going to do a lot better job than I am right now. But it also gives examples of which pick it is that's going to be given up. So that's good for if you want to really go and try to understand what pick is given up for each team yada yada um because it's it gets real crazy but really the only people that you have to worry about um the luxury tax for this year are the Dodgers and the Padres so that's the only people that are affected by that then revenue sharing guys I know the Brewers are there um 
I don't really remember who after that. I read the list, but the Brewers was at the top, and that's kind of where my memory stops. So, whatever. You lose a draft pick. It's not your highest first-round draft pick. After that, you'll figure it the fuck out. Uh, now for a little history on qualifying offers. Since 2012, 96 qualifying offers have been made. Only 10 have been accepted. As I said earlier, Kevin Gossman accepted one last year. So did Marcus Stroman. Um, the year before that was Jake Odorizzi and Jose Abreu. Oh, we're going to test my knowledge. Before that was Ryu with the Dodgers. And I don't fucking remember past that. Because there that was, what, 18? and 17, there were none. Because um, 17, 13, and 12? I think 12, 13, and 17 were the years there weren't any. So, there you go. That's as far as Moraine goes back. This isn't Jeopardy. This is... I didn't write that part down, so it's not in my notes, babe. Anyway, this year, 14 qualifying offers were made. That's the second highest amount of qualifying offers that have been made since it started in 16, I think, 18, 16, 20 were made. But outside of that, this is the second highest with 14. Um, Brandon Bell, Nick Castellanos, Conforto, Correa, Freeman, Iglesias, Ray, Rodriguez, Seeger, Simeon, Story, Syndergaard, Chris Taylor, and Verlander all received qualifying offers from their teams. Now, part of those qualifying offers, the kind of specifics, that's probably a good word to use, for this next year, the salary will be $18.4 million, which is down from last year because I'm pretty sure it was like $18.9 last year. So it's $18.4, and they cannot be traded before June 15th, 2022 and they will never receive another qualifying offer in their career so there's those three things um i mean guys like story and seager and correa and freeman they're fucking rejecting their qualifying offers for sure chris taylor probably is um noah syndergaard is probably going to take his though because he hasn't pitched in like two years because of well i mean i know he had those last two games but that doesn't really count he hadn't pitched in like two years because of tommy john so of course he's going to take 18 fucking million dollars why not and I don't know what Justin Verlander is going to do because in my mind, I can see him taking it, sort of, maybe, because he also hasn't pitched in a really long time because of Tommy John. But also not really because he's fucking Justin Verlander, so he can probably squeeze 20 for a year out of somebody. Probably like the Braves, if I'm being really honest. So he's probably going to reject that, so just ignore me saying that he probably won't because he probably fucking will. Now... Notable skips for the qualifying offer. Uh, Clayton Kershaw did not get one. John Gray did not get one with the Rockies. Carlos Rendon with the White Sox did not get one. Alex Wood did not get one with the Giants. Baby, come home. Um, I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not. Actually, I'm not. Alex, we will welcome you back with open arms. Um, yeah, I mean, John Gray made it very clear that he is good for staying in Colorado. Um... The Rockies didn't trade him this year at the deadline or last year at the deadline or any other time. So I really expected them to get something in place with him. If not, definitely make the qualifying offer. I don't know. That one's really confusing for me. I don't know what the hell the Rockies are doing, but that doesn't really change because I usually don't know what the hell the Rockies are doing. So, I don't know. There's that. Um, on the other hand, Carlos Rendon, or not Carlos Rendon, Rodon. I'm marrying two guys together that don't go together. Sorry. It's a fucking Monday. Um, he had a really good year. Injuries at the end of the year, but also this was like his best year ever. Basically, kind of, whatever. So, I don't know what he's going to do. I, I can see why they didn't give him one. I don't fucking know. Um, Clayton Kershaw. It's kind of surprising because I go one of two ways with Kershaw here. Number one, you're confident that you can figure something out. You're the Dodgers and you're confident you can figure something out and you don't really care about worrying about losing a draft pick because you don't think he's going anywhere and you think you're going to be able to bring him back. Or there's something wrong with Kershaw's arm. Or you're the Dodgers and Clayton Kershaw has been the face of your franchise or the ace of your franchise or been your fucking guy for so long 
that you're okay with parting ways with him. He's won his ring. He's won his Cy Youngs. He's done all his things. You're okay with this being the end of that era. I don't know what any of that is. Um, but I believe Clayton Kershaw is going to be able to get more than $18 million a year from somebody very easily. So, I don't know. I mean, he's kind of conquered those post-season. Post-season? Mm. Post-season? <laughs> post-season demons? Um, so, I don't know. I don't know where Kershaw's going to end up. He probably, like, come play for Atlanta. There's a running theme here, and it's everyone's going to come play for Atlanta. I don't know if you watched my um, trade deadline stuff with Chris Rose at the All-Star break. I also picked everyone to come to the Braves, and I fucking won. So, I obviously know sort of something. Anyway, whatever. That's enough about baseball. That's that's the short and sweet of what qualifying offer is. If you have any questions or if I didn't make any sense, please ask. And I'll try to do better. But I was trying to not get too nerdy because the fucking which draft picks you can get gets so fucking confusing. Like, you can be up to your eyeballs in this pick or that pick in, like, 30 seconds flat. So, we just kind of steamrolled by that. But that's the basics. It's based on top 125 player salaries. You can only get one in your career. You have to be with that team for the entire year in order to be able to get one. And if you accept it, you cannot be traded before June 15th of the following year. And you'll never get one again. So, and if you reject that offer and then go somewhere else and get signed, the team that you used to belong to gets a draft pick as kind of like a, sorry, it sucks that your superstar left situation. So, that's the long and short of it, I suppose. Anyway, moving on to football. Um, I opened my big fat mouth and said that Auburn was going to win out. So, obviously, they turned around and fucking lost to Texas A&M because... Why wouldn't they? You know? Um, it was just fucking awful. Uh, the final score was like 20 to 3. The offense did not travel with the team to College Station. They stayed in fucking Auburn and relaxed. Um, Bo was like 20 for 41. Uh, he had a fumble. He had an interception. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlson missed the Field goal, it was like 30-something yards. Uh, we were 4 and 15 or 16 on third down conversions. We had a turnover on downs. Um, we only rushed for 73 yards, 69 of which belonged to Tate Bigsby. So, it was just fucking abysmal. I don't really know how else to put it. It was not good. It was embarrassing it was the worst offensive performance since uh Alabama shut us out like fucking 10 years ago well almost 10 years ago nine years ago 2012 it was um the worst thing since then it was fucking awful but on to the next I fucking guess I don't know whatever football's stupid anyway outside of Auburn Alabama almost lost to LSU. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened there. I watched some of it and like, I don't know. They just, this is not one of the better Alabama teams that we've seen in the last, you know, fucking 12 years or however long Saban's been there. Um, and they just have a lot of work to do and you can see it. And this just might not be their year. But you know what? They've had fucking like 19 of them. So, they'll be alright. Wake Forest finally lost. Um, they were like number nine, I want to say, or somewhere in there. Um, they lost to UNC. Uh, what else happened? Tennessee beat Kentucky. Um, Boise State beat Fresno State. They were ranked like 20-something. Uh, Arkansas beat Mississippi State. Who we have to play soon, so thanks. Uh, TCU beat Baylor. Illinois beat Minnesota. There are no undefeated teams left in the Big Ten. And, uh, yeah, that's about 
all there is to talk about for college football as far as I'm concerned. Auburn stinks. Love that for us. On to the next. Um, also, other sports now exist that baseball has done. The Hawks are like four and six, and the Preds are like six and five. But now that I get to watch them and root for them and slander them instead of slandering the Braves, that witch magic is going to work for them, and they're going to be great. So we'll catch back up on that on Thursday because we'll have much more fun stuff to talk about tonight. The uh, the Preds, who the Preds play tonight? I don't fucking remember. The Blackhawks? Did we just play the Blackhawks? I don't fucking know. Doesn't matter. Somebody. Um, the Hawks play the Warriors. So we'll see what happens. But Thursday will be better. Because like I said, they have my attention now. They have my slander now. So they're going to pick it up. Because they don't want to listen to me, bitch. I'm pretty sure. They all follow me on Twitter and like listen to me all the time. They read my tweets in the locker room like before they go out. So they have to do good. Because they don't want to be embarrassed. I'm pretty sure that's why the Braves won the World Series actually. I mean, like, you don't have to give me a ring for it, but I'm just telling you, I'm pretty sure I'm responsible. Anyway, that's that. Um, I don't really have any new music to talk about because I haven't been listening to a whole bunch because I've been listening to the same old stuff because um, I've been super depressed, guys. And that's weird to, like, say or talk about or whatever because... Um, my favorite sports team in the entire world just won a championship for the first time in 26 years, so I should, like, be happy and celebrating and stuff, and I am, but, like, also kind of want to die, but, like, not really want to die, like, I don't actually want to die at all, but everything kind of sucks a little, I don't know, um, yeah, depression's a fucking bitch, and, like, comes out of nowhere, I had a shitty fucking weekend, and... For no reason. Like, life events-wise, I had a great weekend. Um, Harper's first cheerleading competition was Saturday. They did great. I was very proud of them. Um, we had birthday parties and hung out with friends. And I got some, like, cleaning and household shit done I needed to do that I've been neglecting because I've been watching baseball way too much. So, like... On the outside looking in, this weekend should have been great. But, like, I felt like shit all weekend. And that fucking blows. Like, that sucks. And it's hard to explain to people, like, when you're feeling that way and you kind of just, like, disconnect. Because it's hard to explain why it sucks. Because there's nothing wrong. Like, there is quite literally nothing wrong with in my life right now. It's going great. And I'm so lucky like, blessed to be able to do the stuff that I get to do all the time. But, I don't know. I'm just fucking living it out, I guess. I don't fucking know. Anyways, it happens. Everybody, well, maybe not everybody. A lot of people deal with depression. And there's no reason to not talk about it. It's a little uncomfortable. Uh, I will not lie to you when I say my heart's beating kind of fast right now talking about it because it makes me feel weird because, like I said, there's quite literally not anything wrong with my life. So I realize that, like, it's great. So why am I so fucking sad all the time? Shit if I know. But I am. But you know what? We're just gonna fucking figure it out, guys, because I'm gonna wake up every day anyway and pretend like I'm fucking the bad bitch that I really know I am. You know? I mean, fuck. Jock Peterson told us that we are all bad bitches. And Jock Peterson would not lie to me. You know? So, I'm going to just keep waking up and keep fucking doing it. And so are you. And I believe in you. Because you're awesome. Whether you think you are or not. Anyways, enough of that. Um, it is cold as fuck here. So, I am full on in boots season. And I'm probably going to keep... That's, that's the light of my day today is my fucking sparkly combat boots. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, whatever it takes for you to find something to be like, that's fucking cool and fucking fun, do it. If it's sparkly combat boots or a fucking coffee that costs $7 or fucking listening to some good music that you never heard of or 
vegging out on the fucking couch and not getting up all day or getting up and doing all the things or whatever it is that you need to do to make you feel awesome, fucking do it because you deserve it. And that's enough of that. And now that I've been talking for like fucking 25 minutes, I'm going to shut up for two seconds and you guys can listen to me talk to Josh Donaldson. Um, we actually recorded this like two weeks ago now. Fucking two weeks ago. Uh, because we recorded it the Tuesday that the World Series started. Was that a Tuesday? I think it was. Doesn't matter. Game one of the World Series is when we recorded this. And I'm just now getting around to posting it because I don't really like the way it turned out. But you know what? It's me fucking chatting with Josh Donaldson. So, it's kind of fucking cool, you know? You know? Um, but it is the first time I interviewed somebody by myself, so it's a little weird. In my opinion. But also you're your toughest critic. But also it might suck. I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> That's a fucking awesome introduction. Anyway, point of the story is I'm going to shut up now. You're going to listen to me talk to Josh Donaldson. He's going to give you a prediction on the World Series, which actually comes true. So shout out to him. And yeah, guys. Um, peace, love, and go Braves. Go Braves because we are the World Series champions. Hey y'all, it's Ashlyn. I am here with Braves and Auburn legend Josh Donaldson. Um, we are going to just chat about life today. I don't know, okay. fun, tons of fun stuff. Um, yeah. I went to Auburn, as I said, just like you did. I didn't graduate from there because you know I had like a lot of fun, but <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure you get that. So, yes, I do. I was wondering, what's your favorite Auburn memory? My favorite Auburn memory, um, baseball-wise, I mean, both of them happened early on. My freshman year, um, we were able to get to a regional, and I had a pretty good regional tournament there, so that was probably one of my better baseball moments. Uh, and then freshman freshman year football team. It was 2004, 2005. That's when we went undefeated. We had Carnell Williams, Ronnie Brown. That was a good uh, team. Jason, Jason Campbell, uh, Junior Rose Green. I mean, just uh, we had a – our team was – that was probably the best Auburn team that's stepped on the field. Uh, yeah, that team was – That was put together. They yeah. should have been national champions, but that's yeah. beside the point. Yeah, they, they let Oklahoma in. I still don't like Oklahoma for the sheer fact I, that Oklahoma I still Oklahoma don't like Oklahoma got... either <laughs> for the second yeah. reason. <laughs> Them, no, and no. I don't like Ohio State. For saying, yeah, all, Ohio all, State's all always – yeah. So, yeah, I loved it down there. I had actually went down for a softball game this past year, and it was the first time I'd been down in years – Mm -hmm. And it's like, I was there in 2008 and 2009. So I was mm -hmm. there like a few years after you, but even just since I've been down there, it's completely changed. Like, yeah, it has. Big time. I mean, there's sky bar, but that's like, um, there's sky bar and there's tumors. Everything else is different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've, they've definitely built it up a lot for sure. Oh, for sure. Cause I lived like in a little like rundown duplex and now like, Everything is nice condos. Like the whole mm -hmm. town's nice condos. So lucky mm -hmm. for those guys. But <laughs> I didn't I didn't have that, but that's all right. So we know that the Braves are in the World Series like right now, actually. Yep. As we're speaking, mm -hmm. they're playing. And I thought you might like to know that when I say you're a Braves legend, I really do mean it because I don't know about that. Promise. We refer to you we still this year around the trade deadline when all our friends were talking we we're like what do we want what do we want we're like well we need a josh donaldson yeah not that we need you specifically we'll always take you back though don't forget it but we need somebody who's ready to just like come out and play and like he can be the bad guy if he needs to be the bad guy. He can be the motivator if he needs to be the motivator. <laughs> like, he is ready to do whatever because yeah. I'm sure you know or maybe look at it the same way that Musgrove, Donaldson, dust up back in 19. Like, we're all convinced that's what took the Braves as far as they went in 19. 
you're accredited for most of that. I hope you know that. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that somewhat played a part. I think that's when I started playing better as well after that incident happened. Um, and, you know, something against Musgrove per se, I think it was just kind of, you know, I was having the okay year at the time. And at that time, you know, I was hitting in the middle of the lineup for the Braves and uh, having an okay season at that point, not anything great, not anything to really, you know, write home about. But after that instance where I really kind of started taking off. So once I started playing better, the team, you know, in general, started playing better. That's so there is some truth to that. Yeah, we we always still like that's what we look back on. Like, okay, that we need a moment like that. We got Jock this year. He seems to have kind of brought some energy with him. Kind, mm-hmm. So hopefully that helps. But when I say a race legend, I really do mean it. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> but I was wondering how has dad life been treating you outside of baseball? Yeah, uh, today we went to the mall. Of uh, you know. And, uh, you know, she, she's a great sleeper, but she does not like to nap, you know, so that, it, it, that makes it hard on, um, uh, dad and mom at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been fun. I feel like, um, Brianna, who is, uh, Aubrey's mother, she kind of took the, the brunt of it early on when right. I was in season right. and I had to be gone and stuff all the time. And, you know, she did a lot of the dirty work now, you know, she's get, approaching one years old and she, you know, the, so, some of the fun stuff starting to come, come about. And last night she took her first steps with, and awesome. unfortunately for, you know, for Brianna, she wasn't able to be home. She had, uh, she was doing some stuff with her mother and sister. Uh, but, you know, I was able to witness, you know, her first steps and uh, she was walking to, to me. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. So I, it's definitely a learning experience with all of it. I mean, uh, and I'm very grateful to to be in this situation for sure. Yeah. I have two kids. I have a six year old and a four year old and they're, it, they're a ton of fun, but, and they're all different. Like mm-hmm. my, my six year old and my four year old could not be more different, but <laughs> it, it's fun. They make life fun. They make life busy, but they make life fun. Yes, for sure. So, okay, I know during the CS, you were super active on Twitter for a few days. We were all very, like, eating it up with a spoon. We loved it. <laughs> it was awesome. I, I feel like I can stir it up with the best of them. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. So, I was wondering, speaking of stir it up, how do you feel about robot umpires? Are you pro? Are you against? Do you want a person back there? Do you care? Oh, uh, honestly, even if we have robot or machines call in the strike zone, there's going to be somebody behind home plate. Right. Uh, so that is not going to go away from the game or or like visually what people are used to seeing. It would be more of, um, from the talks that I've had with umpires and around the league is that there would be like a, a buzzer or something on their right. hip uh, to where it's going to – dictate ball or strike i personally do not think that mlb would not have they wouldn't have to go to this system Mm -hmm. if they would just if they would allow their um, allow the umpires to be more specialized so you have umpires that are on the bases uh and then you have umpires that work strictly behind home plate Uh, but in order to get behind home plate they need to pass a series of tests what people don't understand with umpires in Major League Baseball is that once you become a Major League umpire, you get to obviously get to work the bases and then you get to your chance to go behind home plate every four days or, or whatever it may, may be. Um, to me, there's just some guys are just a little bit too big of strike zones. Right. right. If, if for somebody, especially in my career, that's been. Um, you know, I have a good idea of what the strike zone is as a hitter. Yeah. And what and and I also know what it does while someone's hitting to when strike zones start getting expanded. Mm-hmm. And also the same end, if a guy's getting uh, squeezed behind home plate, if a guy's missing strikes and he's calling them balls, like that plays a 
part of it too. But, you know, in our game of baseball, the only thing that really gets paid attention to is the pitches that are called balls that are strikes. Right. The pitches, I mean, there's so many pitches throughout the game uh, that pitches that are not, they should not be called strikes that get called and it just, it goes unnoticed. That's why I started getting vocal because, you know, <laughs> you for, need to both ends. Yeah. I would, I would say like offensively, if you like in terms of sport, the hitters get treated like a defense gets treated in football. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, you just do whatever, like, all right, we're all the favors in those sports are for the offense to, to the quarterbacks, to the receivers, uh, and such that as a as a defender it makes it very difficult to do your job right without being penalized hitters were kind of the same way um, and I, I know a lot of guys feel that way we, we just had to oh strike zone is different every night okay cool like you just gotta, you gotta like, you just you're gotta expected deal with to deal with it and adapt or whatever or or, or like my favorite line ever is uh, oh that's too close to uh, to take with two strikes what I don't see that in the rule book saying that's too close right like this is the major leagues there's not a higher league than the major major league baseball the hitters should get rewarded for not swinging outside the zone right yeah like that's that's part of what pitchers that's what pitchers want you to do they want you to swing outside the zone and uh you know so that's just a you know, that a hill that I'll die on until it changes. I don't blame you. I'm kind of, I'm not anti-technology, but I really like the, the idea that you said, like, let them be out there, but there's got to be some sort of expectation. Like, you can't just. Or criteria. Can't, yeah, like, make it, you got to you got to make a little bit of a consistency there. Otherwise, like you said, you're, you're just expected to deal and adapt every single night when. Well, I mean, game. even the cons- consistency gets thrown out there because most of the guys are consistent for the most part. Right. But they're consistently bad. Right. You know, or they, or, you know, there are umpires that are good. And I, to me, I just think that uh, you have to earn working the strike zone. Like, not everybody should be able to do that. Just like I'm playing third base, I, I haven't earned the opportunity to go play center field. Right. Nor, nor am I good enough to go play center field at the major league level. Or right. shortstop, for that matter, predominantly. I mean, I understand there's shifts. But for me to play out of position, I would be hurting my team, right? To where we have replay in place, and there's a whole argument mm-hmm. about that as well. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, like the thing that can, the thing that dictates the game the most right now is the strike zone. That's balls and strikes. And if, even if guys are consistent and he's consistently calling a pitch that's off the plate, well, I've built my swing. Guys have built their approaches, their swings on pitches that are called strikes. They're not called strikes, but pitches that are, supposed to be strikes, strikes. <laughs> not pitches that are supposed to be balls right so like now when pitches are getting called strikes that are balls I have to change what I want to do and ultimately that's probably going to uh, hurt my chances at success yeah absolutely I brought up replay I I hate our current replay situation I don't know that it'll ever change I feel like we, we just waste time with replay really at this point. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful mm-hmm. idea, but it's not executed really well. I hope that eventually maybe replay, strike zone, all that stuff can improve a little bit because it does – I mean, that affects the game day in, day out. We mm-hmm. have a, a – the Braves lost a game this year that they shouldn't have lost because – I saw that. Alec Ball never the, touched home. Yeah. Like, he never touched home. I saw home. that. But – there's nothing you can do about it, I guess, because replay does – says whatever. So, I really hope for the sake of our sport and the sake of, like, just the people who watch it, I guess it gives us a little a little extra publicity when they screw stuff up like that. But that's not really the publicity I want for the sport that I love, and I'm sure you guys agree. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I feel like um, there's several 
different avenues that they could probably do with it. I would think that there, you know, there has to be some type of technology out there to, uh, I mean, you look at like tennis per se, like tennis, I don't know if you've watched tennis, but tennis, like if they challenge a ball that's in or out, like they actually have like the technology to like if the ball hit the line or if it was right. outside the line. Yeah, I feel like with there, there, do, yeah, there's got to be yeah, something. So, yeah, and, and I mean, I think that there could be like sensors that are either put in the, into the bags or plates or something. And, and personally, I think that, you know, I think the replay needs, there needs to be a little bit of adjustment to that, um, you know, especially like for slides, like we were, you were just saying slides that where guys have to go into bases. Mm-hmm. Like if a guy slides into a base and then pops up a hair and can't stay on the base, like to me, he should not be called out. Right. I, I agree. Like, and, and, and so like there could be an amendment for that to be like, if the guy gained or if the, if the person gained possession of the bag and he pops up, as long as he wasn't trying to advance, then he's still safe because it's such, uh, to me, it's such a difficult and I'm, su- I'm really surprised that there's not more injuries for guys that are trying to put their foot down into the ground and spikes getting caught mm-hmm. uh, than, than what there are. But to me, that would just like personally, that would be an amendment uh, like that I would probably put into replay. Yeah, I, I hope they fix a lot. So I, number one thing I would like to see is just whoever's reviewing up there doesn't know the call that's already on the field. Just give no, no bias. No, you don't know. Yeah. Just here it is. Is he safe or yeah. is he not safe? I feel like that's a very simple thing to yeah, do. Yeah, and so I don't – it's – yeah, and I don't know if, like, everybody knows this, but it's other umpires that are in – Right. That are in the replay. And so a suggestion that I've had uh, would be to have a neutral party in there. That you need an umpire in there to deem rules – Right. You can't expect just a neutral party to know all the rules of baseball. I mean, most of that, most of the guys that are playing the game don't even know the rules. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, you know, the, the rule book is pretty extensive, but I would like to, for there just to be neutral parties and to where it's not another umpire that's making the decision. Yeah, I've, to just have like a blank slate, like you were saying, no outer safe, and if it's inconclusive, the replay just says inconclusive and place place stands on the right. field. It's hopefully there's there's some improvement there, but that's neither here. I think there. there will be. I think there will be a, um, at some point. Unfortunately, they haven't called me to ask what I think. So until that happens, <laughs> they should. I guess we're stuck. I know they, sh- they should. So, okay, a little less baseball, a little more off-season, just general life stuff. What's your favorite off-season activity? I know you were golfing the other day. Is that your go-to? Yeah, golf. Yeah, golf. And I, uh, my other hobby is I collect sports cards. Oh, that's cool. Like, like baseball, football, basketball cards. Uh, That's a hobby of mine as well. So those are two, my two big hobbies that I like to do. And then you know, mix them, you know, being a dad first. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find time for those others while, you know, that's taking the majority of my time. And then also uh, off season workout regimens and stuff. Oh, like yeah. That. It's off season. Yeah. Y'all work out just as hard, if not harder off season than you yeah. do during the season. So I get that. Um, okay. So I have a little section that I dedicate every time to music and like what I'm currently listening to. Mm-hmm. I, I love baseball, but my family is a music family. My dad's a drummer and my parents own an audio cool. installation company. So that's what I've grown nice. up around all the time. So I like to ask, like, what do you like to listen to? What are you listening to now? Like, what's your favorite? What's your go-to? Oh, what is the name of the group? I just kind of started getting into a little bit. I've always kind of been R and B, rap, a little yeah. bit of country every now and again. That's kind of been my go-to. But I've kind of been switching it up a little bit. I think it's uh, Hand of Blood or Blood is My Val- Valentine. I love Blood is My Valentine. They're awesome. Yeah, Blood is My Blood. Of, Blood is My Valentine. Like I really got into them towards the end of the year. It really just kind of uh, that that was that's newer for me. 
for yeah. for me to do that. Uh, and I'll listen to some Mumford and Sons and, you know, I'm pretty eclectic. To, I, I don't have just like one specific genre that I go to. I, you know, I'll listen to Jewel, Alanis Morissette, Adele, all the way to, you know, like I just said, Bloods My Valentine. And, yeah. And then rap, R&B, you know. All I, like to, I like to, I like to, I like to karaoke to R&B. Oh, okay. That's my, so that's good. That's, 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 what's your that's, go-to that's, karaoke song? Uh, either some Usher. Okay. Uh, Usher or uh, Drew Hill. God, Drew Hill. I love Drew Hill. Th- that transferred to Cisco, if people don't know who Drew Hill is. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of showing my age a little bit, but that's that's where it's at. Hey, it's okay. I've been listening to. I was trying to get my mindset into like Braves Land, so I listened to a playlist today that was like top hits of 1995, and <laughs> went to like talk to some people in my Braves group chat about it, and they were like, "Yeah, we weren't born then." I was like, "Well, shit." <laughs> um, Never mind then. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. 95 had some bangers, by the way. That was the off season. The 90s and, were the best. Like, the 90s were the best. It was so good. Shardy Swing My Way, which I totally oh. forgot about that song until I heard it today. I had to listen to it about 15 times in a row. Like Casey was, and JoJo. Yes. Casey and JoJo uh, and Boys to Men, like, ruled the world back then. Master P. Yep. They're all. Bone Thugs. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I can keep going. It's, it was good. It was good. It got me back. Like, like I said, I mean, I didn't feel old until I went to talk to people about it. And she was like, oh yeah, I was born in 98. I was like, well, <laughs> fuck me. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yep. Yep. Take that. Yeah. Appreciate that. Take that L for me. Uh, yep. <laughs> well, thanks very much for taking some time to talk to us. Hopefully we can maybe chat again with Emily and Marla maybe get a little more into your baseball time and actual time with the Braves and sure, figure out sure. why that peppermint door wasn't quite enough to keep you in Atlanta we'll, <laughs> we'll keep that, get back to that when we can <laughs> we can meet with them and I hope you are going to have a wonderful off season and we'll be watching Thank you me. next year and like I, I said that. if you ever want to come back we're, we're always are always welcome. DH Thank you. I appreciate that very much. DH is coming to the NL. Just remember. Okay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I understand. All righty. Well, you have a good night, and I'm going to go watch the World Series. Braves Me and too. Six, by the way, what's your prediction? I think this is going to be tough for the Braves. I mean, I think it's going to be tough. To me, if the Braves win, it's going seven. Yeah. Uh, if – to me, if it goes six, it'll be Houston. Seven, it'll be the Braves. That's that's what I feel. Um, but Houston provides a, a very tough matchup, and they have so much experience in that lineup. And um, it's going to come down to to both teams' bullpens, really. Mm-hmm. Who's going to hold up the longest? And I know that the Braves have uh, you know some guys that have been used a lot already yeah. this postseason and throughout the year so if those guys can hold up then they got a chance but I mean that Houston's lineup is is pretty so relentless deep. it's 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 deep and um you know Atlanta's got a deep lineup as well but they're gonna have to get that timely hit and yeah uh you know if the Braves are gonna win and I'm not trying to put any extra pressure but if the Braves are gonna win um Ozzy and Freddie are going to have to have a big series. Yeah, it's so, going to have to. It's going to have to get. Everybody's going to have to get hot and stay hot, because I do feel yeah. like I, I told this to a friend today. I feel like if we if we get this, we stole it. Like we're going to have mm-hmm. to steal it. It's not going to be just flat out ours because, like you said, they have the experience. They have three times in four well, five years. Is both of both t- yeah. yeah both t- both teams are quality and it's yeah. not it's not that I think that it's a mismatch by any any chance I think it's going to be a good series um but at the end of the day both teams are going to have to catch some breaks yeah uh, in order in order to win 
the only difference is that I think Houston has a little bit more depth, as you were saying earlier, to kind of create those uh, possibilities a little bit more. I was, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I got a lot of friends and people that I still keep in contact with over there in Atlanta. And, you know, I don't, I'm normally pretty neutral when it comes to watching games. Yeah. But, you know, to, to see the Braves win, I would be happy with that. That, that will be awesome. So I'll yeah. cross my fingers and I'll tell myself you're crossing yours too. And All we'll right. watch some good baseball. Good talking to All you. All right. Have a good night. You too.